Okay. So uh, welcome to this one hour launch event for the Red Funded Next Generation Research Supervision Project or RSVP. Uh, my name is D Doug Cleaver. I'm Director of Doctoral School at Shabbat Hallam, Chair of UKCG and Co-PI for this wonderful project. And uh, UKCG is delighted to be hosting this event and to be a partner in this project, both of which align closely with the Council's mm -hmm. charitable objectives. For housekeeping purposes, uh, please note that we're recording this meeting and we'll be posting it on websites and YouTube later. Um, closed captions are available via the CC button at the bottom of the screen. As I said, this is a large meeting, so do please ensure that you are muted. Um, also, uh, please consider relabeling yourself. There's three little dots in the corner of your picture, if you can find that. And if you click on that, you get the option to rename yourself. That can be useful for the chat later on for if you're identified with a with an institution. In relation to the chat that we'll be coming to later, the question that we're going to be asking, and I think Alex is about to post this into the chat, is what would you find to be most valuable in your institution's current super? support for supervisors what do you find to be most valuable in your institution's current support for supervisors right now i'm delighted to be able to introduce stephen hill uh director of research at research england obviously part of ukri where as well as being responsible for research funding including qr capital funding he contributes to national and international debates and discussions on the enhancement and assessment of research and research impact. So, Stephen. Thank you very much, Doug. And uh, it's, a, it's a real pleasure to, um, to be here today uh, at this launch event for the Next Generation Research Supervision Project. And, and I'm delighted to be able to welcome you all to the event. Um, this project is an important one for Research England and fits very much into our mission, which is to create and sustain a healthy, dynamic, diverse and inclusive research system within English universities. Um, and I think we probably all agree that postgraduate research students, doctoral researchers are central to uh, a successful and thriving research culture. Um, they're the next generation of researchers who will go on uh, through their research and through other work to make a difference uh, through contributions both within the academy uh, but also, you know, really importantly, outside of the academy. Uh, so uh, looking after and nurturing our postgraduate research students is a real investment in the future of research, as well as an investment in the research of today. Um, and I think we all um, uh, know, and there's lots of evidence to suggest that research supervision is a key determinant of the success and the development of PGR students. Um, and a really uh, central um, component for a positive research culture, uh, which is another uh, thing which is very uh, close to my heart and, and an important, um, important target for um, both UKRI broadly and Research England within that. Um, UKRI is, is uh, committed to supporting a system that provides a positive experience for doctoral researchers and allows them to contribute to that thriving research culture that I've talked about. So last year we published our response to the, um, the call for evidence for the new deal of PGR uh, for PGR and recognize that we need collectively to work together to increase the diversity of the P PGR student body and to ensure that they're fully supported both in their research work and through into a full, the full range of dynamic and flexible career paths that are open to um, doctorally qualified researchers. And, and in that document, we emphasize the importance of consistency and quality in the supervisory process as being a key part of this. And more recently, uh, UKRI has published its revised statement of expectation for doctoral training uh, and the role of supervisors and, and the importance of supervisors is again explicitly called out and recognized in that document because we consider it it's so important. We acknowledge that the quality of supervisory practice is a key component of the doctoral training environment and therefore the wider research environment that, that, um, that uh, doctoral students experience. Um, and we think that an important 
part of our expectations for those we fund uh, in the doctoral research space is to really think about how they can enhance the professional development of supervisors as long alongside uh, supporting doctoral researchers. And just taking this down from a UKRI level to a Research England perspective, um, we're also very interested in uh, what are the key features of a positive research culture and a positive research environment. We're currently working with our colleagues in the other higher education funding bodies to develop the, the processes for the next REF, REF 2029. And a key part of that now is how do we recognize and reward uh, effective research environments. Uh, and we think that, um, that, that research supervision and the way in which doctoral students are looked after in that research environment is, is a key component of that. Obviously, no decisions have yet been taken on the, um, the indicators for people and culture and environment uh, in the next ref, um, but definitely one that's, that's very much on our list of things to look at is the environment within, within which doctoral researchers are uh, developed and nurtured and the role that supervisors play in that. So I think across this landscape, you can see for us, um, research supervision or supervision of doctoral researchers is uh, you know, really a central area um, for, uh, for developing the sort of research system that we want to see. So that's why Research England was so excited to be able to invest in the RSVP project, um, because we will believe that it addresses these aims uh, through its, num its numerous work streams, through systematically reviewing the scholarship to better understand research supervision, uh, to explore with HEIs, industry and other funders how supervisory teams operate, um, develop the, the best practice, and importantly, provide the framework for conditioning, continuing professional development for uh, research supervisors and mentors. Um, and through that work, the, the RSVP project, we think will contribute in a really important way uh, to supporting the development of policy and processes uh, around uh, the supervision of doctoral researchers. Um, so I think this is a really important, exciting project. Um, it's it's going to do some really great things to support that overall aim of, uh, of enhancing research culture that we in Research England and in broader UKRI have. Uh, so I'm, I'm really pleased that the project is launching today. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing how the project develops over the coming uh, years uh, and uh, makes, I'm sure, a real contribution to the future of our research system. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stephen, for uh, for a, a really lovely welcome, and indeed a thank you to Research England for the funding, without which it wouldn't be possible. My name is Karen Clegg. Um, I'm the the co-PI uh, director of the project. I am utterly delighted um, to be here today and to have enabled this project uh, through to fruition with a huge amount of help from a, a variety of people who will introduce you to um, in the next fifty minutes or so. So I, it's it's huge pleasure that we take on um, all of the the expectations that Stephen has outlined. It's been about three years in the making, from the initial idea through to um, through to today, and it's a recognition that doctoral supervisors perform a, an absolutely vital role and are part of the research culture. We want to recognise and value and celebrate the work that they do in supporting our doctoral researchers. And, and also bring on the next generation. And that's really where the title came from. We're lucky in that um, when we were talking about a title and what we were doing, um, it just naturally abbreviated. There is a sense to which most supervisors um, have a vision for the research. So it seemed um, appropriate and not to be bending the truth too much to put the, the vision as a, as a capital V. And that led itself very nicely to the RSVP acronym which we're embracing in full as an invitation to you as a sector to be involved and, and to respond um, and to, to collaborate and work with us as much as, as you wish. So the, forgive me, the, the vision of RSVP then is to transform the culture and practice of research supervision. And by that, we, we simply mean that we think there are ways in which supervision can build on, on its existing platform um, to work with a, 
a next generation of researchers who are coming into different modes and ways of conducting research. Um, you know, we know that many come in through prior publication, through the professional doctorate, through co tutel programs, obviously part time, sometimes hybrid now following COVID. And we really want to explore the way in which doctoral education takes place and, and the different ways in which supervision might be configured. There is absolutely no sense with this project that there is a right way of supervising um, or that there is one way of, of putting together a doctoral programme. We want to, to really explore the diversity of practice that's taking place to better understand that and to cascade what works in different cultures and again deliberately not saying you know practice that works or, or excellent practice as Stevens highlighted we're really concerned here with with consistency and enabling UK higher education institutions in particular to be able to be confident about what they're saying is, is available and we know that we're going to learn from the many partners internationally that are on this call um, and who will watch at a later date so we're, we're going to work in partnership with the universities, with industry, um, with business to better understand what works in different contexts. And our work with industry and business is particularly pertinent because we're keen both to understand the role that tertiary supervisors, i.e. those outside of higher education, bring. Uh, what role do, do those people play when they come into a supervisory environment? And also what do big companies like GSK and Unilever, who we're lucky to have on board. How do they provide CPD and, and onboarding and induction for new members of staff? And what can we learn from industry that we could potentially use and translate um, to higher education? So we have a number uh, of key aims and questions that we want to explore. As I say, a little bit about the team supervision. What, what happens when you bring different people um, into the team? What might happen if you differentiate the roles? So, for example, you might have a postdoc who's been very close to the doctoral process themselves, who is supporting a project and who is particular, uh, particularly focusing on perhaps the, the methodology and the experimentation. You might have a tertiary supervisor. You might always have someone like a researcher developer who's thinking about the, the careers and the professional development. What, what happens and how do these people come together? More importantly, we want to really drill down into what supervision practice looks like in different contexts and disciplines. It's not the same if you're doing philosophy or, or you're doing nuclear fusion. The, the, the ways in which supervision practice takes place are different, but we don't know how different and we don't know what the, what the implications are. We want to provide opportunities for people to compare and contrast and observe each other's practice so that we can learn from each other in the same way as we have done uh, about our teaching practice, where we've worked together in communities of practice and we've looked and said, that's an interesting approach. Perhaps I could work that into my own practice. So we want to enable those, those opportunities. We're also looking, as I've mentioned, at different types of research degrees. If we're going to really extend the pipeline of research talent in the UK and globally to solve those big, big problems, then I think, you know, due attention is being given by deans and directors of graduate schools as to the different ways in which we can offer doctoral programmes. There isn't one size fits all and we need to be as accommodating as we can to bring in a, a diversity and provide some equity over the, the, the process in getting into doctoral education. Last and by no means least, uh, we want to understand and combat uh, what we're referring to here as per supervision practice that there is no real sense that there is that there are poor supervisors, that's not what we're saying, but there are some practices that perhaps are less ideal than others. And again, we want to share practice, bring people together to explore what works in different contexts and, and how we can maximize that. And as you'll see from the right, we're, we're doing that in, in a way in which we hope will give us confidence that what we're finding out is consistent of, across the piece, working with, with students, working with deans and directors, um, and with a number of, as I say, HE uh, and uh, external partners. So what we're going to do um, can be can be roughly uh, outlined in this uh, series of circles. So if we start 
with intelligence building there on the on the right in grey at two o'clock, then that's the process that we're going to start. And, and Doug will elucidate a little bit on that in a moment. We're building on those industrial collaborations. We welcome more. If you have really strong associations um, with industry and with people who you know either are part of your supervisory arrangements or are excellent at, at CPD, we would really like to meet them um, and get to know them. So if we can draw on your contacts, please allow us to do that. We're going to develop mentoring and communities of practice and networks so that everybody can talk about what they're doing um, and, and problem solve and, and really share practice and ideas. There will be a, a programme of professional development, both for onboarding and for those with some experience and those who have a, a huge amount of experience. And we'll be drawing on that experience to, to help us build and develop um, the, the, the processes and the products that we bring forward with the ultimate aim of enhancing the doctoral experience, both for the supervisor and for the PPR. So that Stephen and his colleagues at Research England and UKRI can be assured of consistency. And so that we, with our hands on our hearts, within our institutions can say, everybody's having a really great experience here. Um, it's it's a tall order and that's why we're, we're talking about transformation. I'm gonna hand over to Doug now, um, who will lead you through a little bit of the, the how we're going to, to go about this huge task. Thanks, Karen. Uh, yeah, so here's some, some of the how. So uh, we put this under, un, in, into three columns. So the yeah, initially we'll be looking at the pedagogical aspects, um, this this intelligence building, um, looking to uh, really understand what is going on, what is out there, um, and and uh, many of you in the in in the Zoom will be um, contributing to that. Uh, we, we hope we'll do be doing some some book work, uh, but but also asking people, uh, uh, asking institutions, what's going on currently in in terms of um, the, the CPD and, and, and development that's provided for research supervisors. Um, we also want to learn more and more about what it's like to be a supervisor. Um, the uh, UK Research Supervision Survey was run in 2021. We're running it again in 2024. Um, it'll be coming up very soon. And again in 2027. Um, we run it in 2021. Uh, we got uh, nearly three and a half thousand responses. We're hoping for even more. But that's a, provide a really, really a rich data set of what it's like to be a supervisor um, in, in the UK. And that's going to inform our practice. Um, and under practice, yeah, we're going to uh, pilot and evaluate CPD interventions. And part of what we're doing today in this launch is uh, seeking um, out these 20 plus uh, uh, universities that are going to contribute to that and be part of this evaluation. Um, uh, we're not only um, interested in what happened in terms of supervision within universities, we're also very interested in what happens in uh, in, in collaborating organisations, in industry and in business. We know there are a lot of uh, people involved in supervision, but um, how do they uh, get get trained up in it? Uh, how, how does it fit in with, 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 their, with their other activities? It's a really a very grey area. Um, We'll be publishing and sharing what we do in reports and uh, and, uh, and and other things. Uh, we also definitely want to interact with, and we already are interacting uh, to some extent with uh, with, with policymakers. Uh, Stephen mentioned before how uh, uh, PGR is an essential part of um, of research culture, and uh, we'll be feeding into Ref, and uh, he's developing the, the, the metrics in respect of that. Inevitably, uh, there's going to be some talk between the the, the project and the people uh, working on uh, on that, uh, for example. But I really want to re reiterate that this is much more carrot than stick in terms of the supervisors. Uh, we're wanting to develop people and and actually advocate for them in an informed way, and actually have some some proper data saying this is what it's like to be a supervisor. This is what. Uh, where, where additional uh, help or assistance might might be needed, and uh, and, and to um, uh, re really focus on that side of things. Um, and uh, there have been some various comments uh, in, in the chat I've noticed as well, really stressing that this is for everybody. Um, 
yeah, a lot of diversity in terms of institutions, in terms of people involved in supervision, uh, be it their role uh, or, or, or their background. Um, we are very, very open to learning more and more about uh, all of those aspects and um, and and setting things out uh, in a, in a form which is which people can dip into as suits them and making it a supervisor focused uh, act activity as much as possible. Thanks, Karen. Let's go to the next slide. Um, the overall team, the core team for RSVP. So uh, you've heard from Karen, you've heard from uh, myself. We've also got um, Owen Gar from UKCGE, uh, Heather from uh, Coventry University, Alex from King's, and I think that Richard will be joining us from, from Nottingham as well. So those are the uh, the six uh, institutions, organisations that are core to, to, to RSVP. Uh, on the right there, the, the main institution, the lead institution is York, and that's where the project management uh, we, we'll, we'll be sitting. We've also got external expert design team from, from Denmark, Kita and, and Miriam, uh, and the whole project will go through a proper formal evaluation, and that's being led by colleagues of mine at Sheffield Hallam University, uh, Jill, Lucy and Lewis. Thanks, Karen. Um, but then uh, this is the next slide, and this is going to become the busiest slide ever. Uh, We've got so much buy-in for this project that it's uh, that it's amazing. Um, we've got every, every single um, subunit of, of UKRI plus the Wellcome Trust, uh, a, a swathe of uh, external bodies, um, uh, um, companies, professional bodies. Uh, and there's some uh, some some nice logos up there, uh, and then uh, other. Um, red funded projects, uh, Prosper and 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 Y Seed, which is one of the uh, first research England projects looking at um, PGR provision and opening that up to uh, more diverse groups in terms of ra ra racial equity. Um, so we've got six core partners. We want to extend that out to uh, to twenty. Um, we with other uh, HEI practitioner partners. Uh, we're looking for at least eight more institutions or clusters of institutions uh, to contribute and be part of um, the, um, the, the the guinea pig uh, guinea pig group for us uh, rolling out our our, our provisions. Uh, and we've also got some international uh, practitioner involvement. Uh, it's Research England funding, so we need to um, keep the funding just to, uh, just within England. But we are. Um, very interested in what's going on internationally, and we've definitely attracted uh, uh, attention internationally. I know there's um, um, quite quite a lot of play, uh, people from uh, in international universities um, uh, joining this this Zoom, for example. Uh, quite how we do that is a little bit under, uh, up for debate, but um, we're definitely interested in talking to people at, at the moment. Thanks very much. And now I'm going to pass over to Heather from Coventry. Okay, thanks, Doug. And um, we're now moving into a different part of the presentation and going with the RSPB, RSVP theme. Um, this is our invitation to you, and I'm going to talk through the next slide. Okay, so again, going with the RSVP, this is this is the menu of offerings that we are proposing to offer the sector at, at the moment. And I am actually not going to say you can read this for yourself. I'm actually going to go through them one by one to actually whet your appetite and get you thinking about which parts, which bits are you most excited about, which bits are you most interested in, what is it, all of it. So first thing we're going to be looking at is onboarding. So actually having a structured framework for supporting those new to supervision. That doesn't mean just those new to supervision per se. It could be new to supervising specific types of research degrees. So it could be if you're new to supervising a PhD by publication, is there a framework? For, can we develop a framework for that? The next phrase, train the trainer, is I, I, I'm the one who um, beats everybody up about this because I want to call it develop the developer because we don't have research. We have research developers. So this is very much about workshops and activities. The key principle behind most of the things we're going to deliver under this heading is they're going to be completely adaptable, they're going to be open access, they're going to be co-created, and they're going to be evidence-based. So what we will not be producing, because I'm absolutely adamant, is a lovely big chunky folder full of slides telling you exactly what to do in your institution, because most of us who've been around as research development for a while know it doesn't work like that. You see what somebody does and then you say, oh, yeah, I could take that, but I, I'd need to do something different at my institution. So that's what that's the thing that I'm 
really looking forward to is working with research developers to co-create and co-design, I'm probably using the terminology incorrectly, but materials and activities that you can use in your own institution that means something to your supervisors supervising your breadth of research degrees. Mentoring, you probably would have spotted on the uh, list of things that we're going, list of people in the team. We have um, a specialist joining us from, I want to say New Zealand, who's going to be leading on our mentoring work. And that might not be just mentoring in your own institution. That was probably part of the vision is cross-institutional mentoring for, for supervisors, which we don't think anybody's done before. Um, this next one, peer observation of supervision. I think Karen's been telling people about this and everybody says, oh, a lot of people say, we don't do this, but what a great idea. And we, our um, expert um, consultants, Miriam and Gila, um, run this um, as a matter of course um, in Denmark, and they've got a way of setting it up. And um, we observed it in, in practice in November, Karen and I, um, we're really keen to get um, the process shared with, with everybody in the sector to see if they want to adopt it. I think Karen already said it, communities of practice for supervisors and research developers. Um, again, I think quite a lot of time with projects, stuff gets shared a little too late down the line. So we wanna get those, particularly the research developer community of practice going as soon as possible, because then you can start inputting into what we're doing in the trainer trainer workshop activities, how you adopt practice. We're also gonna be working with the UKCG Researcher Supervisor Recognition Programme. So we've already got the individual recognition route um, at two different levels that is available for UKCGE, but we'd also like to investigate something akin to um, accreditation at programme levels, very similar, but not as, um, shall we say, as hard work as the, the other accreditation programmes that are available for teachers in the sector. And Again, this was this last one, the self-assessment tool was something that Research England asked us to develop while we were um, submitting the bid and going through the application process. So that's something that we've already started working on. We also, as Doug mentioned previously, we are going to be running the UK Research Supervision Survey in 2024, in May and June this year, and we will be running it again in 2027. So that's your menu, hopefully whetted your appetite. That might not be all that's available to you. Going with the menu analogy, there may be seasonal, seasonal specials, or you might be able to request something that suits your particular diet. There is a generic email address that's going to be shared at the end that we'd love to hear your ideas be sent to. And now I'm going to hand over to my next colleague, which is Alex Pavey from King's College, to talk about the expressions of interest. Not Alex? Yes, I am. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Heather. <laughs> the right one. <laughs> Um, thank you and hi everyone, lovely to um, see so many of you here. So um, all I'm going to do before, before, before handing on uh, in turn um, back to Karen, I think, um, is just, just highlight a, a few of the themes that have come out uh, from all of your contributions in the chat. Um, and thank you for all of you for, for contributing. I think I'm sure we've all had experience of setting up online events of one kind or another where you want to set a question, you want to encourage the participants to feel engaged and you you brainstorm a question, you think, okay, now we just need to hope that people actually, that resonates with people and people actually respond. And it, it's really energizing to see just how much um, it's it's kind of how much response uh, you've all given and, and the ideas that you've shared. So thank you for that. Um, a few, just a, a couple of highlights uh, and themes that I've drawn out from looking through your contributions. Um, one of the things that's 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 good to see and and you know validating hopefully for the direction of the project is you know themes that Heather has just outlined in our, in the, the kind of planned menu um, of offerings on the RSVP project coming out in some of your local highlights. So things like communities of practice coming through very strongly as a particularly valued um, approach to supporting supervisors at different institutions. Um, and the importance of recognition, whether that's kind of institutional recognition or kind of national sector recognition for supervision and the value of that. Um, a few other things that, that strike me before I hand on to uh, Richard to talk about the expression of interest. Um, a lot of highlighting of the value of collaboration within institutions, so colleagues across 
different departments, professional services departments, academic departments, working together to deliver supervisory development programs. Um, and the kind of, you know, not just noting that in the comments, but the enthusiasm that comes across in, in, in noting that and how valuable it is, that certainly resonates with my own experience and, and I think is, is really nice to see. Um, and I'll, I'll wrap up with a point that, you know, I really like, um, which is um, a comment from from Michael about the value of just having a really good intranet site, you know, just the bread and butter things of where do your supervisors and your colleagues go to get information, to get resources. Um, we'll all have experience of the, the cognitive load involved in navigating institutional websites and finding resources and finding necessary policies and things. And again, in my experience, if that's something you can get right, it's hugely valuable for engagement and for just the um, enthusiasm of people who are who are taking part in programs like this. Um, so I'll leave that as some highlights, but I'll continue to monitor the chat and I might respond to a few of you in there because I've enjoyed doing it so much. But uh, I am now going to hand over to uh, Richard uh, from uh, the University of Nottingham, um, and he's going to talk about the expression of interest process. Richard. Uh, so, okay, so hi everybody. Um, thanks for coming along. It's great to see so many people. I'm Professor Richard Graham from University of Nottingham uh, and I'm also the APVC for our Researcher Academy at uh, Nottingham. I'm one of the uh, co-investigators on the on the project. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to sort of talk you through our thinking of what we're trying to achieve through the partners and uh, what the criteria are, how, we, how we're going to choose partners. I guess just a little bit on process first. There's um, uh, there's going to be a, a, a document that you can fill in, an expression of, of interest which, that will appear soon on our uh, website. And we're asking for you to email that to us by uh, the, the current deadline is uh, 19th of April. Um, so I'm just going to give you some idea of what we're looking for. And then hopefully the expression of interest will make sense in terms of the questions that we're, we're asking. Um, so maybe the easiest thing to describe is, is definitively what we're not looking for. We don't want our project partners to be exclusively the largest, oldest and most research intensive universities. That will not give us the depth of understanding that we're looking for um, within the within the project. Um, so, so maybe I should describe what we are looking for by working with the, with the partners. So we'd like to understand the diversity of institutes in the PGR provision and use that to help us create interventions that are widely applicable. Um, and so we want to work closely with, uh, with partners within in their context. So we want a range of uh, different contexts uh, and we want to work closely with, with partners there uh, to find out what works in your context, context, what doesn't, and of the things that didn't work, were you able to tweak them to make them work? So we, we're trying to, to use a range of partners to help us understand how to adapt interventions locally and what the underlying principles are to, to make them work. And then the final thing that we're looking for is, is there a mechanism to embed the supervisor CPD in your institution in the long term so that the, the benefits exist beyond the lifetime of our project? Um, so we've baked these ideas into the criteria uh, and the questions in the expression of interest are geared up around these um, uh, around these kind of things. So the, the criteria that we're looking for is we, we want to recruit a range of different institute sizes, research scope and intensity. Uh, and we're also interested in whether your institute has some perhaps unique features that we can learn from. So some examples, but not, not exclusively limited to things like international campuses. Do you do extensive professional doctorate programs? Do you have some unusual uh, student demographics that can help us to learn about um, uh, perhaps underrepresented groups? Uh, do you have extensive part time provision? So is, is there an angle that, that you have that you can um, uh, uh, that we can learn from? Um, we're looking for a uh, commitment to engaging with our process. So specifically train the, uh, train the trainer and delivering the training. So there are questions in the expression of interest around what type of things you're, you're able to commit to um, for that. Um, it's also really important that we learn um, from you through feedback. So when you deliver the training, um, we, we learn by reflecting with you on how the training, uh, training went. So what went well, what could work better in your context and why? Um, what's, what, what are the underlying reasons for that? Uh, and we'll be doing this through collaboration with our uh, evaluation team and helping us to refine the, the program's content. Um, we're interested in sustainable delivery. Can you Do you have the capability of continuing to deliver the training at the appropriate scale for your institution's size? Um, uh, I 
UK, uh, what's your willingness in terms of uh, data sharing? So we're not looking for sensitive data, but are you, are you in a position to share data on things like total number of international students, part-time versus full-time students, um, and UK RI versus self-funding? So this sort of high-level data just to help us understand your uh, institution. And then finally, um, do you have uh, industrial collaborators who might also be willing to to work with us to help us understand um, how these co-delivered um, uh, uh, PhDs work in a in a supervision context? Um, okay, that's everything from uh, from me. I'm just going to look at the program. Who I'm passing on to now is yeah, maybe somebody can help me out. What's next? What's next on you the can, program? You can keep going if you want to, Richard, or I can pick up the criteria. Uh, please go ahead. All righty. So um, I, I could do a big reveal now, couldn't I? I could I could give you a website. So the expression of interest form that Richard has so eloquently just spoken about um, is now available for, for download. So we're not going to give you all the details because that would be tedious, but you can download it. What we are asking for that I think you will want to know is that <clears throat> we're asking for a lead person, one contact and if it's a consortium approach, and I can see in the chat, some of you are already getting very excited about the opportunities for that, then we want one person who will oversee that consortium. Ideally, we're looking for, um, <clears throat> excuse me, for partners who already work together. So if you are already working with a number of institutions and, and you know the way of working and you know what you can each bring to the party, then please provide a rationale for that. We're, we're investing that very important money in, in working with different partners. And so we want to know from you how you're going to make this work. We haven't got the capacity. And so we've got a limited number of, of investments that we can make, but we want to make the money go as far as humanly possible. So we're working and relying on you to help us work with, with that collaboration. Um, <clears throat> we're really open and we want you to be open to bringing on board industrial partners. As I say, if you've got connections with, uh, with, with industry or business who you think can either bring intelligence and experience to us and will be willing to share how they work with their staffing and how they bring their, their people on in a, a positive culture, then we would really like to work with them. Equally, we'd like to work with those, uh, those organizations who have people who act as part of supervisory teams. So please be, be open to that. Um, again, that commitment to engage with the team in advance of the pilot stage so that we can support you through the process and, and we can listen and understand your context. Um, there's a lot of you know, messages in the chat I'm seeing about how you engage supervisors who perhaps don't want to engage. You know, it, It's a culture change project. That's how we've pitched it. That's what this is going to be. And we have to work together to understand that. So we would like for you to, to commit to engage with us in, in a number of meetings and, and they are quantified again um, on the web and on the expression of interest form. Some considerations then. The time commitment for most of these pilots is it, we estimate is gonna be about 12 to 18 months from having initial conversations, having some meetings, understanding your culture, um, maybe making some refinements, meeting your team, you know, this, this is a relationship building exercise that we're going through. It's not just giving you a load of resources and saying, off you go, get on with it. Um, we want to make this work in, in, in this, the, the best way possible. There isn't any funding. We're not giving you money. Sorry. Um, I know we've had a huge amount given to us by Research England, but it, it's got to go a long way in terms of, of the teams and the consortium. What we're giving you is our time um, and our expertise and, and hopefully... Um, the resources that, that we will create, all of those will be freely available on the web pages for everybody. So if you aren't one of our practitioner partners, there will be a lot of ways in which you can engage and we'd really encourage you to sign up as part of our, um, our mailing list so that we can we can continue to, to have a, a conversation and, and learn from you. We are going to give all of those things, and uh, we will we will cover a, a little bit of uh, you know of refreshments and things. But the the travel will have to be met by you. As Richard said, the deadline is the nineteenth of April. Hopefully, that gives you an amount of time. But obviously, factor in um, that there's Easter in the middle of that. 
we will be permanently, um, uh, you know, quite regularly putting updates on the on the web pages. Um, we're going to try and make use of things like podcasts um, and, and video diaries and that kind of thing as well, just to make it a bit more human so that you haven't just constantly got to follow us on Twitter. Sorry, X. But if you do that, uh, we would appreciate that too. I know there'll be a lot of questions. Uh, we've tried to head some of those off on the website, but we, we will um, enable some time for that now. So um, web page, if you want it, rsvp.ac.uk. Um, fairly, fairly predictable. Hopefully you can help us make that live um, beyond its, its initial um, understanding. You've got our email address there. You've got LinkedIn. Um, and uh, we're going to use all of those social media channels um, to cascade and, and, and reach out to you as a wider community. So that is enough input from us. I'm delighted that we're, um, we're, we're kind of on schedule and we're enabling some time for questions now. A question from, uh, from Rachel, look at the OU. Rachel, over to you. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, I was just um, confirming agreement there um, to speak. Um, I was just interested, did anyone say anything about the time scale of the project, how long um, the funding is for when there might be another sort of open event like this? You know, this is wonderful that, you know, large numbers of people can can join. Um, I, I don't think, unless I missed it, I don't think anyone mentioned sort of time scales of when there might be opportunities to be involved or further further conversation. Thank you, Rachel. You're quite right. So uh, we kicked off, uh, I mean, we're, we're launching officially today, but the project started in October 2023. We're funded until the end of September 2027. There will be uh, an amount of, of, of events um, and workshops and things that we will invite people to. We're not anticipating at the moment extending the practitioner partners because we need a fairly long lead in with those people. Um, and working with them and their their cultures before we can start piloting in 2025. Um, although if anybody knows of any extra funding we can tap into, we will do that. That's great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take questions from uh, Luke and then Hira. Thanks, Karen. Um, did I hear Richard Wright when he said he wasn't interested in kind of partners, but were kind of the big old of uh, institutions which I'm I, I'm and I'm representing one of a, a big I mean we're not that old but we're 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 older than some and we're bigger than some and we are however very diverse so uh, uh, apologies if I gave the wrong impression we're not <laughs> interested exclusively in the largest oldest universities there's, there's we're looking for a, for a spread so of right. course um we're, we're <laughs> um we're, we're we're interested in universities such as your uh, such as yourself, and I'm I'm a, a Leeds alumnus. Um, oh, congratulations! Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the, the the point is that we 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 want to build interventions that are widely applicable. So, um, so we we need that diversity of types of institution. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to go to uh, to Hira Azim. Thank you, Hira. Um, hi, the, the session was really useful. Um, my question may be a bit out of the context, but um, let me tell you about myself because I am a, a, a lecturer in higher education and I have been uh, conducting research supervision for undergraduate projects. Uh, but I was looking forward to uh, how I um, can uh, build a partnership on behalf of my institute. And secondly, because I am already into higher education, so any resources or information I can get regarding a, a funded PhD for myself, please. Right, Hira, that, that's that's not really the focus of our, of our project. Um, we're looking to support doctoral supervisors, but if there is anything that we can, um, I think we will have to put our heads together offline um, and think about how we can support you, if that's okay. Um, yeah, that would be great. Uh, Thank you. Uh, um, I'm going in the order that I'm seeing them. So I'm going to go to Simon at Durham and then Sabrina at the GW4 Alliance. Please, anybody else, don't let me ignore anyone. Hi. Thanks, Simon. <clears throat> Hi there. Um, 
Well, thanks for wetting our appetite. Um, and and it, was, uh, it was regarding that wetting process that you, <laughs> um, you gave a whole load of examples of things like mentoring, uh, which um, co mentor, uh, sorry, in, um, collaborative mentoring across institution, cross institutional mentoring, et cetera. What I couldn't understand was are these people that you're in, you're put, you're trying out with those 20 participants or are they or, the, or are you offering those to, to more people and over what period so the intention is that we uh, we contract uh, the the new practitioner partners uh, that might be single or, or consortium we've got our existing partners of seven so that that makes a total of, of 15 obviously we've got five within the consortium Hence, on some of the slides, you will have noticed that we're talking about 20 institutions. In actual fact, it will be more than that because we think, as I say, people will come together as, as consortiums and, and groups. Any of those that, that want to trial mentoring in any form, um, and our, our mentoring coordinator, I think, I think is on the call, Julia, um, but isn't yet in post, we will be offering, so for example, typically you might think about a, a, a more experienced supervisor working with a less experienced supervisor in a kind of classic um, mentoring relationship where, you know, expertise is, is, is shared with one with the other. But, you know, there's reverse mentoring, there are, you know, there, there's, there's peer mentoring, there's, I won't speak myself out of this, but, you know, there are many different forms and, and modes of, of mentoring that I think we can engage with. And it, it will be open to all of those practitioner partners to identify what what is best for their institution. Uh, you know, we don't want to duplicate, but it, we, it, the idea is that we work with institutions to identify where that can best complement existing uh, support. Does that answer your question? I think so. You're, so basically, people are sort of guinea pig pigging that, that those models, and then you're you're using that to build um, resources going forwards. Yeah, yeah, fine. That's, that's going to be a formal evaluation, Simon, and, yeah. and, and therefore we need to, rip, to to ring fence the group that, that we're going to be doing that formal evaluation on. But the resources that come out will be generally uh, uh, available, and sustainability beyond uh, the funded period is um, is absolutely essential. And I'm sure Stephen is is still here, but that's that's what we're committed to, and that will be delivered and made available through through, uh, through something that the UKCG is going to be looking looking after, and it will also be uh, integrated with. Um, uh, things like the UKCG Supervisor Development Program, so that, uh, it, it should be as joined up as possible, but in such a form that it depends what type of institution and what type of supervisor you are as to what resources you're going to do. So it's definitely not one size fits all. It's um, uh, come many to many. Um, Sabrina. Hi, um, thank you for holding this. It's been really informative. Um, I think my question probably follows on from Simon's very well, this kind of menu of choices. I noticed in the EOI form, you're asking uh, partners to perhaps select. Is the idea that you're trying to get participants to select a range? Like, I'm not quite sure how I understand the partnership as a whole, and then this menu of choices and, and how that's kind of working. So does that make sense? Yeah, it does, Sabrina. That, so I, I, there are many ways that I could answer that. I think what, what we want to do is be open to what institutions feel they need. So okay. when, when you've had a look at the, the expression of interest form, it, it asks you a series of questions about what you've already got in place, what you'd like to take on board. If that's a single institution, obviously you can answer in, in relation to your strategic aims and, and your vision and how that best fits. If it's a if it's a consortia, and I'm you know I'm guessing you you GW4, so you you are you are a consortia, then I think it would be what what we would look for is a discussion between yourselves before you submit and, and to decide whether as an alliance. You, you know, you all want to to look at things like, you know, observation of supervision and that you would do that perhaps within your alliance. So you could perhaps partner up, um, you know, different different institutions to 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 compare and observe each other. Okay. Um, or, or you might want to do, you know, one one institution looks at 
at introducing that and, and another one looks at, um, at mentoring, but we've got to balance what we can resource really. And we would ask you to invite you to look at that as well. All right, thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, I'm going to go to Phil uh, at Newcastle and then Louise at LSBU. Hello there. Um, I wanted to just ask, so a lot of what you've talked about has been engaging. Phil, you're really quiet. Is any chance oh, of dear, you oh, dear. Oh, turning oh, up a mic? Yeah, hold on. What about now? Much better, thank you. Okay, a lot of what you've been talking about has been engaging with institutions or engaging with supervisors. So what are you going to be looking at? How, so have you got any plans for how you're going to engage with um, people who are being supervised and their experiences of being supervised, so the, the, the PGR students? Yeah, I mean, of course, that was that was the starting point in, in many ways. Um, you know, three years ago, I, I sort of sat back and, uh, and you know, with colleagues, we, we looked at obviously the, the postgraduate research experience survey in the UK, there are equivalents in, in Australia and many other countries. Uh, you know, there have been surveys by nature, that there have been significant amounts of, of understanding of the, the, you know, the PGR experience. And I think we're, we're all cognizant of, of the needs of, you know, well, well being as well as the, you know, the, the academic process of a, of a doctorate within our institutions. So we will be conducting some focus groups with PGRs, but I think there was an understanding that we, we have a, a reasonably good understanding of what the PGR expectations and needs are. The gap was with the supervisors. And so that's where, that's where we would want to focus our attention. However, you're quite right. If we're piloting interventions within an institution, we would also want to look at how, how will you measure success, as it were? So if you're going to introduce mentoring at, at Newcastle, for example, um, you know, we'd be keen to work with you and understand how you're going to evaluate the qualitative impact, uh, hopefully positive impact on your PGRs as part of that. You know, it, it is complex, but we're, we're starting the other way around with the supervisors. Is that okay? He's gone. Yes, it was very good. Thank you. <laughs> thanks. Thanks very much. Um, I think Louise was next. Uh, thank you. Um, I just wanted to um, ask a little bit about um, how we're going to analyse um, sort of the data and which things from these pilots we think are, you know, working really well with the PGR arena, which things... Um, you know, if we were thinking about other institutions sort of bringing this in, what ones we might think would work best first and that kind of priority and um, a mixture as we've got mixture of supervisors, some are brand new and some are really experienced, but they then might need, um, you know, the environment changes and, you know, there's different things they need. So I thought a little bit more on uh, how you might analyse the data that, that we bring to the table from the pilots would be really useful, please. Oh, gosh, that's a really challenging and, and, and great question, Louise. Um, and I'm not sure that we've got our evaluation team on the call. If any of them are, please, uh, please make yourself known. We, we've, we've gone, taken quite a lot of effort to think about the evaluation um, and it will follow a, a kind of logic model. So when once we know who the partners are, um, and who we're working with, then uh, then then there will be a, a sense of understanding what that context is and what what it is that we want to to measure in terms of success. What we're looking for, um, in some ways, are things like um, increased confidence levels, which in the UK Research Supervision Survey in 2021, there were a, a number of areas where supervisors uh, said they were they felt less confident, not less competent. Right. but less confident. So, for example, supporting um, well-being and mental health, supporting careers, uh, quite understandably, and, and, I, and I suppose not surprisingly, the areas where that, that, that aren't, aren't subject knowledge are the areas where, you know, some supervisors feel less confident. So we would hope that we can track things like confidence levels, for example, um, 
from a, a kind of baseline level. We're also looking from an institutional perspective in terms of what have you got in place right at the start, um, you know, and and how has the intervention, the you know, the CPD activity, in enhanced that. So there will be there'll be some quantitative data, I think, in terms of things like confidence levels, and there'll be qualitative. There'll be a lot of qualitative data about you know people's experiences. The the other things that we're looking for, is, as Doug has has, uh, has identified, are things like you know the the engagement and and the appetite for supervisors who want to gain recognition through, for example, the UK um, Council's uh, recognition program. So those who are interested enough and feel that there's a benefit in putting together a portfolio of evidence about their practice, we're, we're also keen to find out you know which institutions have got things like supervisor of the year or you know those kind of awards for recognizing supervisors so it's you know it's a multifaceted approach to evaluation that picks up individual context and the way in which um you know institutions are valuing and, and recognizing and rewarding supervisors alongside what the funders are requiring and you know Stephen's example of the the new expectations um, document that was produced by UKRI and published back in January, you know, th there are some metrics that that we're already looking at, thinking how might that be measured. As Doug has said, you know, if if we could get supervisor recognition and and CPD included in the people, culture, and environment section of Ref 2029, then I think that will focus quite a lot of attention. At institutional level, and we are we are having some discussions with, um, with 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 the ref folk about that. So there'll be some policy implications that we'll we'll evaluate. There'll be a, you know an amount of guidelines that I suspect we we will produce in terms of um, how institutions might think about combating poor supervision practice. For example, those are some of the the outputs that we're that we're going to produce. And which are simultaneously the things that we will uh, will be evaluating. Does anybody else from the team want to come in? Have I, have I missed anything or anything else to add in that? In that, I don't think you've missed anything, Karen. <laughs> I was going to come in and say some things, but you've done very well in covering more than I probably would have done. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Lucy. Lucy is part of the evaluation team. I'm aware of time. Um, Paul's got his, got his hand up, but I think I promised anybody else. I'm going to take Paul because he's looking at me, and then I would encourage you, please, um, fill, it, fill in, uh, you know, be on our mailing list. Um, send, send us your comments. Please please tweet um, slash X. That's not, that's not a thing, is it? Tweet your responses. Um, follow us on LinkedIn, if you will. And thank you enormously for your engagement. I'm saying all of that now in case I forget. I'm going to let Paul have the fastest question ever. <laughs> thank you, Karen. And thank you, Heather, for, for wetting the appetite and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I was really interested to hear about this. Uh, and I will follow regardless of what happens. Uh, I'll follow with, with uh, gusto. Um, You've almost touched on it, Karen, uh, it, and that's the kind of the, the the policy landscape around supervision and its impact on improving research culture. And so I wondered if there was room in there for because I think what's missing from most supervisor development is giving them the context of a changing PGR landscape. And I think it's a really important element of anybody's development is to understand why are we doing these things. We're not just telling you to work in supervisory teams because for the fun of it, uh, th 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 there is a much bigger kind of context to all of this stuff so if there's a, an emphasis on that um it's somewhere in in one of the pilots I, i'd be interested to hear about that a bit more as well thanks paul you're, you're right there's a huge amount of leadership it's it's the vision part of the of the supervision um you know it's the ability of a supervisor to to see the direction of travel and to help someone you know progress through through to an end point but it's also about about the, the vision of the area and understanding that landscape. So for any of you who are working in research and development, want to think about how you might build supervisor development as part of a leadership program, um, thinking thinking about you know your, your connections with the the Concorda um, for research and development. Then I, there are huge synergies in I think what we can provide supervisors, many of whom are also PIs. 
um, and, and the way that we can think about that culturally. So I'll, I'll throw it sort of back at you, Paul, but very interested to hear in how we, we might serve that leadership um, aspect of supervision. I'm deeply aware that it's now one minute past two and you all have many places to go. Thank you enormously um, for your time, for your interest um, and for being a, a massive audience. Um, thank you again to Stephen at Research England uh, for being here and, and for giving his time um, and to all my colleagues in the consortium and to everybody that we hope we're going to get to know over the next few years. This is really exciting um, and it's been a, a great opportunity to meet you. Thank you very much, everybody.